President John Taylor said it would be impossible during the limited time allotted to this meeting to do justice to the life and labors of Brother Orson Pratt. That must be left to history. In paying respects to the departed, we felt that though we had to do with death, we had also relations to life. We had an existence before we came here. God is our Heavenly Father, Jesus is our Elder Brother, and they, with the priesthood in the heavens, dictated our positions while in the flesh, and the conditions that await us in the future. We came here to fulfill a work that God designated before this world had an existence, before the morning stars sang together, or the sons of God shouted for joy. From the time of the first promulgation of the gospel by holy angels to Joseph, until today, the affairs of this church have been dictated by the heavens through the priesthood upon the earth, and we were indebted to our Heavenly Father for all things. We were all poor, fallible, erring creatures, and could do nothing without the sustaining hand of God. No one, apostle or prophet, could accomplish anything in this work except God be with him. To him we are indebted for all blessings we enjoy. Do we feel sorrowful when a good man goes back to God who gave him life? No, not if we understand the truth. The scripture says, He that hath eternal life is rich, pointing to the coffin. There lies a rich man. He has fought the good fight, and he is all right. Brother Pratt was foreordained from, from eternity to hold the priesthood which was given to him, and he came at the right time. Would I wish to retain for a moment a man whose services were required behind the veil? No, I would not. There is a work to be done there a thousand times as great as here. And what have I to say against his departure? Nothing whatever. The priesthood ministers in time and in eternity. It was said in one of the revelations that Father Joseph Smith was with Abraham. Why? Because he was a patriarch, as, as was Abraham, and he has gone to his own quorum. So with others who had departed. President Taylor related an incident on the plains, when a brother was supposed to have died, but when hands were laid upon him, he spoke and said he had been in vision, had seen Joseph and Hiram, had received a mission to the spirit world, and did not want the brethren to keep him back from his mission. The speaker felt that this was right. Brother Pratt had gone to labor behind the veil. He had gone to join his quorum, and we should not be sorrowful. It is the Lord's will, let him do as seemeth him good. And if another and another is wanted, all right. And we should seek to know God and to bow to his will in all things. Let us try to imitate the examples of Brother Orson wherein they were good. God is at the head of this kingdom. He will do as seemeth him good, and we will say amen to it. Although it was painful to the friends of Brother Faramore's L. Young to think they should see him no more, yet there was this assurance that the time was coming when all that were in their graves should be called forth by the voice of the Son of God, and we should meet with those who had departed. President Taylor closed by invoking the blessing of God upon the friends of the deceased and upon all the faithful in Israel.